In this video, we're going to take a look at all the different one-step mold conversions that we can make. So here's one where we have an 8-ounce glass of water. It has a mass of 29.57 grams. How many moles of water are there? So let's analyze, list out what we know and what we don't know. We know we have 29.57 grams of water, and we know we're trying to find out how many moles of water there are in total. What relates our grams of water to moles of water is molar mass, so we need to find the molar mass of water. Water is made up of two hydrogens with a mass of one, and one oxygen with a mass of 16. Two plus 16, we know water has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. So then we're going to take our given, put our given over one, and so now I need to figure out how to use my conversion factor, that one mole of water to 18 grams of water, in a way that I can reduce out the grams of water and get to moles. So I'm going to put grams on the bottom and moles on top. And then grams of water divided by grams of water reduces out, leaving me with moles of water. I can take 29.57 divided by 18 and find there to be 1.64 moles of water in that 29.57 grams of water. So now we're going to take a look at a copper penny. And that copper penny is made up of 0 0.0488 moles of copper. I want to try and figure out how many atoms of copper are there. So again, we're going to analyze, figure out what we know, what we don't know. In terms of this problem, we know that there's 0 0.0488 moles of copper. We don't know how many atoms there are in total. So i got to figure out how can I relate moles of copper to atoms of copper. And I know that one mole of anything is Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of it. And in this case, since copper is an element, it's made up of atoms. So one mole of copper is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So we take our given, put it over 1. So we have that 0 0.0488 moles of copper, put it over 1. And now again, I need my conversion factor that's going to allow me to reduce out moles and get to atoms. So I need the one mole of copper on the bottom and my 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper on top. Moles divided by moles reduces out, and it leaves me with 2.94 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of copper in that copper penny. Here we take a look at a balloon. That balloon has 1.25 moles of helium in it. So what is the volume of the balloon? Again, listing out what we know, what we don't know, when we analyze this problem, we see we have 1.25 moles of helium, and we're trying to figure out what is the volume. So I don't know the volume. How many liters is that balloon? And I got to figure out now what relates moles of helium to liters of helium. I know one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters of that gas. So I can take my given, my 1.25 moles of helium, put it over one. Now use my conversion factor, my relationship between moles and liters, where I can now reduce out moles and get to liters. So I need moles on the bottom. So 22.4 liters over that one mole of helium. Moles divided by moles reduces out, and 1.25 times 22.4, I find there are 28 liters of helium in that 1.25 moles of helium inside that balloon. Next, we're going to take a look at the world's largest diamond here, Cullinan 1. It is made up of 8.84 moles of carbon. What is its mass? So let's list out what we know and what we don't know. And in analyzing this again, we have 8.84 moles of carbon and we're trying to figure out we don't know its mass. So what relates moles of carbon to grams of carbon? That's its molar mass, and since it's just carbon, we can just take it off the periodic table. The atomic mass is 12, so its molar mass is also 12 because it's only carbon. So in one mole of carbon, there are 12 grams of carbon. So I'll take our given, put it over one, our 8.84 moles of carbon over one, and again, using that conversion factor, that equality up there, in a way that I can reduce out moles, I need moles in the denominator, so I can put my one mole on the bottom, my 12 grams on top, and I find that Cullinan 1 happens to have 106 grams of carbon. Here we have a standard propane tank, and it contains 18.0 liters in volume. And when that tank is empty, that is the pressure inside is equal to the pressure outside, so no more gas diffuses on out, we find there to be um, actually still gas inside. There's still going to be some propane inside that gas tank. So how many moles of propane actually are still inside that gas tank when it is empty? So let's list out what we know and what we don't know. 
and we know we have 18 liters of volume for that gas, but we don't know how many moles there are. And what relates liters to moles? Well, I know one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters, so one mole of propane is 22.4 liters of propane. I'll take my given, put it over one, my 18 liters of propane over one, and using that equality to get my conversion factor, one mole to 22.4 liters, I need liters on the bottom, so 22.4 liters underneath that one mole of propane. Liters divided by liters reduces out, and I find 18 divided by 22.4 that there are 0 0.804 moles of propane still remaining in that gas tank. Here we have one teaspoon of sugar, and in that one teaspoon of sugar we have 7.4 times 10 to the 21st molecules of sucrose. How many moles are there? Listing out our known and our unknown, we know we have 7.4 times 10 to 21st molecules of sucrose. We don't know, we're trying to figure out how many moles there are in total. And now my relationship between molecules and moles is still Avogadro's number. But in this case, sucrose being a molecular compound, we know there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sucrose in that one mole of sucrose. So I'm going to take my given, put over 1, my 7.4 times 10 to the 21st molecules of sucrose over 1. Using that equality to get my conversion factor, I need molecules in the denominator, so they reduce out. So 1 mole of sucrose over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sucrose on the bottom. And then molecules divided by molecules reduces out, leaving me with moles. And 7.4 times 10 to the 21st divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, I find that there's 0 0.012 moles of sucrose in that one teaspoon of sugar. So here we got a gas that's made up of carbon and hydrogen. There's lots of different gases that are made up of carbon and hydrogen, but this one has a density of 1.25 grams per liter. I'm trying to figure out what is its molar mass. I can't find it out the regular way of just taking the number of carbon atoms times 12 and the number of hydrogen atoms times 1 and then adding them together to get its molar mass, but I can from its density get its molar mass. So let's list out what we know, what we don't know. We know again it has a density of that 1.25 grams per liter. We don't know its molar mass or how many grams per mole. Well I do know any gas it has a volume of 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. And I can now use that to get to grams per mole because I have grams per liter in my density and if I use moles in liters reduce out liters leaving me with grams per mole. So we'll take our given put over one that 1.25 grams per liter of gas or a little bit easier right in this case would be 1.25 grams over one liter of gas and again I want to get rid of liters this time so I actually need it in the numerator because liters is currently in the de denominator and if I put that 22.4 liters over one mole of a gas, my liters reduce out, leave me with grams per mole, which is my unit for density. So 1.25 times 22.4, and I find this gas has a molar mass of 28 grams per mole.